These aren't peaceful. These are uh, very, very much the opposite of peaceful. Now, it's we who face unprecedented moment and alert the American people that this is no ordinary moment either. It's a tremendous upheaval taking place in our country, and it's a shame. Sky News Digital Originals presents Who Will Win? In less than six months, the next president of the United States will be elected. The contenders, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, again. Americans will have a range of issues and concerns to factor in as they cast their vote. One of the most contentious issues dominating the national dialogue is the ongoing crisis at the southern border. With the potential return of former President Donald Trump to office, Questions arise about how his policies could shape the future of immigration. This is now the number one issue for the American public. We've seen a morphing of three issues, border security, immigration, and crime. They've all morphed into one as we see more people in the country illegally in the United States committing crimes, oftentimes violent. We mm -hmm. know that former President Trump in his first administration implemented policies and conducted international dialogue in terms of diplomacy with other countries that were extremely effective, leading to historic lows in uh, illegal immigration into the United States. So I think many Americans are behind his previous plan, his intentions of what he plans to do when he comes into office, and that is not only stop the illegal immigration, but take action on those that have made their way already into the country illegally. I saw a Gallup poll from February that said in all 50 states, the biggest issue is immigration. And now Ohio is a border state. Missouri is a border state. Every state has now become a border state because these people are being transported at the behest of the Biden administration to all 50 states. There is fentanyl pouring in through the southern border because of Joe Biden, and that's killing our mothers, sisters, brothers, sons, children. So I, I really think that we have to have a wake up call and realize what's causing this problem. Honestly, I don't know if we can unring this bell. I think the damage done under Joe Biden in these three years is catastrophic and extremely damaging to our country. So although I love President Trump's idea of deporting all of these people, when you think about it and you sit in bed, it keeps you up at night. How are we going to be able to do this? But I do think that no one has been vetted coming through the southern border. That's why we're seeing young women being raped, children being killed. It's really catastrophic and a nightmare situation. So I do think that maybe it's starting with people that commit crimes. You hear these stories. This person came through the border five times. It's making sure those people cannot re-enter our country. And I just think that the blood of this nation is on Joe Biden's hands. I think America is going to need somebody strong to staunch the flow at those borders. <laughs> I understand now that ISIS people are coming through the borders now. I mean, it's just bad news. I'm feeling lucky. I want to call the election six months out, okay? And I'll, then I'm going to tell you why. Donald Trump is going to be the 47th president of the United States. There's not much we can do, not much that Biden can do about it. 50% of America, 57% of Americans disapprove of, of Joe Biden. Donald Trump is ahead of Biden by 17 points in terms of the, uh, the economy, inflation, law and order, and especially immigration. There are only two areas out of 20 where uh, Biden is ahead of President Trump, and that's in the area of reproductive rights and, and, and uh, health services. But uh, Trump has, uh, I think, has, uh, has beaten uh, the Biden on all accounts. And I think the, uh, the final coup de grace comes from Bernie Sanders when he raised his troops again and roused his troops again by identifying Biden's support for the war in uh, Gaza as illegal and immoral. And keep in mind, 40, 45 percent of Americans aren't even going to go to the polls. They don't. They don't. We only get about uh, 55 to 60 percent of participation. And uh, right now, uh, a number of polls have fit. I mean, a number of polls say that President Trump's ahead by 2 percent. But look, what he's, he's ahead by 10 percent in all the, um, the, the swing states. By allowing millions and millions, which is not sustainable, of people coming into our country through the southern border, and many, many really bad ones, okay? Many, many bad ones. You're going to destroy Social Security. You're going to destroy Medicare. You're going to destroy the fabric of the country. 
It's not sustainable. It's not affordable by any country. And they're going to destroy our country. So we're going to have the largest deportation in the history of our country. We have no choice. Well, Donald Trump is talking about deporting up to 20 million illegal migrants from the U.S. Realistically, how feasible is that? Well, it's very hard. Uh, what we know is Immigration Customs Enforcement and Customs and Border Protection have the personnel to start to effectively do the jobs that they're tasked with doing. They just need to be allowed to do them. Now, of course, if you're going to start with deportations, you always have to err on the side of national security concerns. There's been policies to include under the previous Obama administration that have focused exactly on that. It's known as secure communities, where you use state and local law enforcement officers, approximately 800,000 within the U.S., to be a force multiplier with federal officials to focus on those that are in the country illegally and committing additional crimes. Those are your priorities for deportation, and then you work your way down from there. But it is feasible. It can be achieved. OK, he can do it over four years. Well, look, I'm not going to put a specific time frame on it. Uh, it may take closer to eight, but it can be done. What I can say is the false narrative of Democrats here in the United States that you need immigration reform to secure the border is a non-starter. It's not true. Both Democrat and Republican administrations have previously proven that to be false. Americans on both sides of the political aisle are looking for action on the border. And after almost four years in office, the border crisis has become significantly worse under Joe Biden. As November nears, it's yet to be seen if you'll try to gain control at the border before polling day. No, it's too late. He's already showed his hand uh, all the way back from when he was campaigning for this first term. And that was he was going to cater to the immigration advocacy groups, which were proponents of open borders. He made promises, brought many of those immigration advocates into the United States government to implement the, volley, the very policies that we see, which have caused this crisis. So with six months left in the administration, the damage has already been done. And it's clearly time for another administration from another party to come into office to correct the ship. Well, I would say when it comes from the perspective of the Biden administration, you're not gonna fix a problem if you don't think a problem exists. And that's exactly where the Biden administration finds itself, uh, especially since they are the ones that caused this crisis by standing down several of the immigration policies and border security policies of the previous Trump administration. And as a result, we see over 10 plus million illegal migrants with no feasible way to vet them. And the impact being felt around the United States uh, is incredible. As these people are coming here illegally, but then they run on foot, they jump in front of your car, they flee, you have to lock your doors, you become afraid for your life. This is impacting small towns just like the one I live in. And I go back to the fentanyl crisis. I think this is impacting every American, right, left, center, every socioeconomic status. I see when you go to random airports in Arizona or in Chicago, these people are in the airports, you see in these shelters in um, Chicago that people are getting all these diseases that we thought have been eradicated for many years. I do believe this is no longer a southern border issue. And you just point to these small examples that when you add them up, they become massive. And that's why the Gallup poll is right. This is a 50 state issue, the most important issue, probably other than the economy. One of the main concerns around the border crisis is who exactly is entering the United States and what safety risk the American people are being exposed to. Over the last few years, we've seen the number of people stopped at the border on the counter-terrorism list and seeing that list grow substantially. How concerning is that for you? Well, with over 2 million gotaways, that is those that Customs and Border Protection have been unable to encounter and stop, the natural question is, if we're stopping close to 700 on the terrorist watch list, 
how many are making it into the country, uh, either as gotaways or those completely undetected. That's the concern. We know here in the United States that based on the numbers, we've been beaten. We've been beaten by those on the criminal side, and we've likely been beaten, unfortunately, by those on the terrorist side. And that's why our threat level now in the U.S., based on global events, which we know have a direct impact on our threat level, but also the fact that the borders have been open, our threat level is 10 times higher than it was on pre-9-11. And that's unacceptable, especially when you have a department like the Department of Homeland Security that was created specifically in the aftermath of September 11th and was created to put a stop to these types of situations. Are you concerned about the number of people that are not being stopped? Oh, absolutely. And I think if you were to get a candid answer uh, from law enforcement and intelligence officials, they would tell you that this is the one thing that's keeping them up at night. Mm. We've heard the FBI director, Chris Ray come out a lot more emphatically to talk about this. And yes, open borders, look, border security not only enforces the sovereignty of a country, but security. This is not unique to the United States. And for any law enforcement or national security official to not acknowledge that would be disingenuous. And that's why we've recently heard the FBI director become more emphatic, as I say, when testifying to Congress, because it certainly does allow for additional threats to make their way into the United States as it would in any country. It's a terrifying situation. And honestly, I, it's a town called Jupiter, Florida. It's idyllic. It's super small. It's a great place to raise children. And you become terrified. You don't know where these people have gone to. You don't know if they're going to break into your home. You don't know if they are armed. And I think that this is a fear that is not unique to me. I feel even more upset and sorry for those people that live in these towns in Texas and Arizona and California that see these things happening every single day. And you got to realize something else. The NGOs and non-government organizations, they are ushering this in. They are allowing this to happen. They are thinking it's a good idea. And you got to realize there are human lives and problems at stake. And we've also heard national security advisors say, we saw what happened on October 7th in Israel, right? So we've let a bunch of people in this country completely unvetted we don't know what they're going to do. We don't know where they're from. We remember 9-11. My husband is a 9-11 survivor. How can we in good faith say that we are not at risk for a terrorist attack when we don't even know who's coming through our border? It is fair to say the world is in a dangerous place, with conflicts arising in the Middle East and the war in Ukraine still raging. Global conflicts pose significant challenges for American foreign policy, with leaders having to find a careful balance between domestic and international issues. During his time in office, President Biden has seen global conflicts unfold. What impact will Biden's handling of the conflicts in the Middle East and Ukraine have on voters? A lot. Like I said, uh, events around the world uh, have a direct impact on our threat level here at home, which is why we expect to be buttoned up and secure here at home, starting with our borders. Uh, the problem is uh, the federal government and the Biden administration have abandoned their federal responsibilities of securing the borders and enforcing the immigration laws. And that opens up to great risks. Uh, I'm aware of it. Intelligence and law enforcement officials are aware of it. It undercuts every single aspect of our homeland security apparatus, and it's unacceptable. It should be unacceptable to the American public I think they realize that as the number one issue now going to the 2024 presidential election. Uh, and it also increases their risk uh, to an unacceptable level. Domestically, recent anti-Israel protests on college campuses have sparked safety concerns and ignited passionate debate. As campuses become battlegrounds for differing ideologies, Concerns mount over the safety of students and the impact of such demonstrations on the broader political landscape. It shows that we in the United States have a significant problem with homegrown violent extremism and the uh, possibility of US citizens, especially those younger adults, uh, open to radicalization. And we need to pay attention to that. 
Uh, we need to pay attention to who's funding that, who's coordinating that, uh, and who's giving the instructions for those uh, to conduct violent protests, which is what they are, and hate crimes uh, against the Jewish population here within the United States. And unfortunately, we have something in the U.S. known as sanctuary cities, which do not cooperate with federal law enforcement officials, especially when it comes to immigration. And what we're seeing here is many universities within those locations adapt the same policies uh, and elements of these anti-law enforcement states and cities uh, that refuse to work with the federal government and therefore increase the risk uh, of anti-law and order by not mm. cracking down on these violent protests. I converted to Judaism for my husband 12 years ago so we could have our son be born Jewish. I took a spiritual journey. I took a difficult journey. I took a tough journey to become a Jew. And what we're seeing now across the country, uh, in the United States, on college campuses, the anti-Semitism is absolutely sickening. But what I would say to Hollywood, you know, the Met Gala was disrupted by these Hamas protesters. Colleges are being disrupted. Graduations are being destroyed. I would ask the left what they think they didn't do here because they created all of this. They created DEI. Our children are learning DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, as young as kindergarten, a system of oppressor and oppressed. And because the Jews have been largely successful, they are considered to be the oppressor, which is insane if you think about what has happened during the Holocaust and how many Jewish lives were destroyed, 6 million Jews. So basically the left has created this animal and now they are shaking their heads and wondering why it's happening. And it's actually quite sickening. You know, they're, they're supporting all of this hatred. And by the way, none of this is free speech. This is not free speech when you are harming other people, when you are threatening other people, when you're disrupting the lives of other people. Of course, we all have the right to peacefully protest. The speech that we should protect is the speech we hate the most and fear the most. This has gone beyond free speech. And, and when Joe Biden, just a few days ago, he was talking very vapidly saying anti-Semitic and anti-Islam. We haven't seen anti-Islam or Islamophobia on college campuses. It's all been directed towards the Jews. So I think the only reason why he's speaking up now is because he feels like he is losing that Jewish liberal vote. These privileged little brats are taking over the universities, as you said, stopping graduations. They're going in and taking over buildings. They're breaking the law. And I think that part of this is also concerning as an American, what workforce they're entering into. They have been allowed to do this through feckless leadership at the administration level of all these institutions. What worries me is these folks are now going into a workforce where this is what they think is tolerable and acceptable behavior. They have no idea where Israel is, what Gaza is, 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 is you know, supports. They've got trans flags saying Gaza, you know, free Gaza and free Palestine and support. They have no idea of the actual culture and society that they're supposedly standing up for. These kids are morons. They're idiots. And I, I think that's what the big shame is, is that they have no clue what they're really doing. They've been funded by left wing organizations, the Rockefellers, the Soroses, the Gates, who are literally just telling these sheep where to go. They're providing tents and funding for them to go out and do all this. But these kids have no clue what they're really supporting. Do you have hope for the future or are you concerned that these protests may continue or even escalate as we head towards the election? Good question. I always have hope for the future. You just need the right leadership to come in office. And no society has survived without law and order. We can go all the way back to the beginning of civilization. Uh, we may not have agreed the way they enforced their local codes or laws at the time, but they had some semblance of laws on the books. Uh, and we need to get back to that. We need to get back to accountability. Accountability equals deterrence. And right now, we in the United States have lost all of it, which makes it a much more dangerous situation. But I do hold out hope that we'll get the right leadership back in office here very soon and that people will start to be held accountable. With less than six months remaining until the election, these pressing issues underscore the gravity of the choices facing voters. Who will be the next commander in chief? 
Only time will tell.